Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we have some news for MTG Arena with this article they have posted called Get Ready for Historic Anthology 4. So the last time they released a historic anthology was back in early 2020, and we're now in early 2021, so it's been almost a year since they have released one of these. So if you don't know what it is, I'm going to break that down for you. Essentially, it's, you know, a certain amount of cards, it changes every time, that are added into the, into the historic format as part of like this set uh, and you can buy the set for a certain amount of coins or gems and essentially you get four copies of each of the cards in it if you don't want to do that you can also spend a wild card so this is kind of just like a injection of a couple cards and normally they're targeted at a couple things now i made a prediction video covering what i thought was going to be included uh, so you guys should check that out if you want to see how i did compared to what's happening but yeah why don't we just read through what they have to say Beginning March 11th, you can per you can purchase the complete Historic Anthology 4 in the MTG Arena in-game store, and it contains a playset, four copies, of every new card. You may also use wild cards to craft these, using a wild card of the appropriate rarity. The Historic format features all sets currently available in MTG Arena, plus additional Historic Anthology cards like these. So yeah, there's going to be 25 cards. Um, it is just a straight injection, kind of what I talked about. So you'll be able to get this for 4,000 gems or 25,000 gold, which, you know, 25 times 4, you're getting 100 cards for 25,000 gold. However, not all of them are, like, necessarily expensive. There are some common, some uncommons. So, you know, while that looks really good, you can kind of d debate about what you want. Of course, it is cheaper than, of course, just doing it with wild cards if you wanted all of the cards. But generally, what I do is I just pick out the few cards I want and craft them with wild cards. And it'll be available in any historic format upon release. So let's jump into this. So starting off, they show us three cards in white that are supposed to kind of boost the power level of it. So starting off, we have Triumphant Wreck. Uh, which is going to be a mythic, and it is a 9 cost, and it returns all artifact, enchantment, and planeswalker cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. I don't know necessarily what they're trying to target with this. Um, maybe we'll start to see more artifact and enchantment based decks, but at 9 mana, it's a lot to ask, especially when we have things like Rise of the Dark Realm in there. Of course, that's not in white, but you have an effect with creatures, which can more often win the game, but who knows, uh, maybe this is going to work really well in something that I'm not thinking about. Maybe we start to see ramp decks include white and then be able to like return a bunch of stuff. I'm not necessarily sure. Next, they have Declaration in Stone. It's a two-cost white sorcery, and it says, Exile target creature and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way, which essentially means you create a clue token, and a clue token is an artifact that says, Pay to, tap, um, sacrifice it, draw a card. So it's giving white some card draw. Um, I don't necessarily think that's a problem in MTG Arena. I feel like white being underpowered is more of an issue in Commander, um, but I do like this for a couple things. Now, it's not a perfect solution, but it is a solution to Scoot Swarm. Um, you know, if, if your opponent has a bunch of Scoot Swarms, you do this. Um, but the issue, uh, and it, it works well, um, because it does only let them investigate for each non-token. So they have, if they only have one real Scoot Swarm, you cast this for two mana, you get rid of all of those Scoot Swarms, and they potentially draw a card if they invest that mana later. So against Scoot Swarm decks, this is going to work really well. So I think that was a big reason for its inclusion. Uh, on, on top of that... I'm just like stumbling over my words. Uh, on top of that, it also works well against token decks, and it can also be used in some jankier purposes if you want to try targeting your own stuff, and then getting a bunch of artifact ETB triggers, uh, or just getting a bunch of artifacts. For instance, if you have the ability to tap an artifact for mana, um, and then you like turn a bunch of Scoot Swarms into basically 250 mana rocks, that's a pretty good effect and something pretty janky, but I think it's kind of interesting. And then we have Thraben Inspector. It's a 1-2 one, for 1, and when it enters the battlefield, Investigate. Honestly, I think this is a really good card. Um, I, I know it is played in some other formats, but I think the fact that this could go in a mono-white deck, it's a 1-2 one, for 1, which isn't bad. Of course, you'd probably prefer a 2-1, but then you're also getting that little bit of card draw in case you do happen to run out of gas. Um, on top of that, it works well in things like Historic Brawl, uh, which is starting to become more and more like Commander. All right, next we have Graveyard Shenanigans. So we have Think Twice, which is a two-cost blue instant that says draw a card. Of course, you wouldn't want that, but it does have flashback. Uh, so you can essentially draw two cards from this for five mana. I don't like the card, but if you care about casting instant and sorceries, it can be pretty cool. Um, I think there's a card that's almost exactly like this, if not better. 
Uh, it's a little bit different. It's from Ravnica, Guilds of Ravnica, and it, it's two mana, draw a card at instant speed, and then you can like jumpstart it for two mana, but then that makes you discard a card. So this one gets you a little bit more card advantage, but requires a little bit more mana. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting card for instance in sorcery decks, but I don't think it'll see too much play. Next, we have Spider Spawning, 5 cost green sorcery. Create a 2 1 2 green spider creature token with reach for each creature card in your graveyard. So, encouraging self mill decks. And then it also is interesting because it has flashback, meaning if you are milling yourself, you can then flashback it from your graveyard. So, it's almost like drawing the card, and this card wants you to mill yourself. So, it works really well synergistically. Um, and so, I think it's a pretty good card. If you're running maybe a, a green black ramp uh, self mill deck, I think this could be a really good uh, card for that. Then we have Adorned Pouncer, which I have a feeling this Historic Anthology has been in the works for a while. Uh, this was a card that was missing from Amonkhet Remastered, weirdly, um, and it is now showing up here. And you'll actually notice as we go forward, there are actually a decent amount of cards from sets we already have remastered of, remasters of, that were weirdly missing. So I don't know whether they made the set and then realized, okay, it's fine to add these cards and they were being cautious, or if they had this planned and then they were making those sets and they're like, okay, let's not include them. I think it's probably that. I think that that, you know, it, they probably designed this and then decided, you know what, let's not. Uh, it would not surprise me if this was intended to come out around the time of uh, M21 and then they added a Commander Legends card because, I mean, that is a pretty new card. But uh, think about it. If they release this alongside M21, you'd have Cat Tribal here. Um, either way, it's an interesting thing for you to mill to 1-1. One, one. It'll come back as a 4-4 four, four double striker for 5 mana. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if this sees play in a lot of things, just because, honestly, a 1-1 one, one for 2 with double strike is not bad. Add the fact that if you run out of gas later on, you can pay 5 mana, get a 4-4 four, four double striker. Pretty good. So if we, you know, all those equipment decks, I think are going to really love this card. Um, it's going to be just a great addition. You play it. It's a really big guy. They have to kill it. If they kill it, you bring it back and now re-equip all your equipment to it. I think this will see a lot of playing like equipment decks. Next, we have some more snow stuff. And I, this was something that I actually predicted, but I didn't do it with either of these cards. Um, but I predicted that they would add snow, um, more, more snow support. Because right now, when you play snow, you are playing standard. Why? Because snow is such an inclusive mechanic for the most part that you really want all of your cards to benefit off of having snow. And obviously, you can run the occasional, like, uh, kill spell. But it's not worth going into historic to get those kill spells when you could just stay in standard. Especially when some of the best kill spells in uh, historic are in standard as well so i like i tried to build a historic snow deck and then i realized wait this is a standard snow deck um and so it's good to see that there will be some differences between the historic and standard versions um and so we have iceberg uh can can cricks it's a two cost blue snow creature crab interestingly it doesn't have the snow border and i don't know if that's because they're mimicking what it looked like in modern horizons or if that's just a little bit of a glitch uh, i hope it has the snow border i like it but whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control you may have target player mill two cards so it's very similar to the crab we got in zendikar rising where it cares about the number of lands um, I hate this personally because I just know those decks that run Runefall Crab, something like that, where whenever you like play a land, they mill either two or four. I don't remember what amount, or maybe three. Uh, they're also going to play this, and then they're just going to play Snow Lands. And then when they play a Snow Land, this is essentially just another one of their crabs. Uh, and so I think that it'll definitely go in that situation, just not even caring about Snow decks. Uh, I do think you definitely need to be like wanting to mill yourself. I don't know if this is just an auto-include in Snow decks, which I think is kind of disappointing. Um, but it is just another Snow creature that can maybe generate you some value um so nice addition next we have merit lages slumber it's a two cost blue legendary snow enchantment and it says whenever merit lages slumber or another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control scry one okay instantly we have a reason to play snow that's a pretty decent effect play land scry one not bad uh and then at the beginning of your upkeep if you control 10 or more snow permanents sacrifice sacrifice merit lages slumber if you do create a 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible yeah this is enough of a reason to move your snow deck into historic if you want that um i think it is just such a powerful effect uh it gives you that value while it's out and then if you have nine other permanents which you probably have at least two from playing it and then that's the third so you do need a decent amount more but it's a nice win con which i feel like historic needed a much bigger win con all right, next we have some very, very, very interesting things for equipment decks. Uh, I would also argue that Adorn Pouncer is up here. I would not be surprised if we see equipment decks run to the top just because of some of these really awesome additions.
First off, Sword of Body and Mind. Very, very powerful card. It's a three cost artifact equipment, and it says equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and it has protection from green and blue. I kind of love that they added one sword, and it happened to be the one from green and blue, the most powerful colors in the game right now. I like that. And uh, then whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you create a 2-2 uh, green wolf creature token, and that player mills 10 cards. Really, really awesome. It creates more creatures so that if the creature holding sword of body and mind dies, you can put this on that creature. Uh, it's going to mill your opponent a ton. Um, so we're seeing a lot of mill, a lot of like equipment love. It also just gives plus 2, plus 2 in protection from green and blue, which again is going to work well with your double strikers. Similarly, uh, we have Goblin Gavalier, which is a creature that I think is going to make its way into like every equipment deck. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 with Trample, but it gets plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it. So if you equip Sword of Body and Mind, it becomes a 5... Um, <laughs> Sorry, it becomes a 5-3 with protection from green and blue, trample, and now when it's hitting your opponent, you're creating wolves and milling cards. That is insane. I think both of these will go into most equipment decks. Then we have Bone Splitter, which is a more generic equipment, but one that almost is kind of needed. We don't have too many things at the low end, and especially in Historic Brawl, uh, more equipment is always going to be better, so I like the inclusion of that. Next, we have something really weird. We have three cards from the Amonkhet block, and we literally just had Amonkhet remastered, um, and they're all at Uncommon, so they're not like these big cards. I'm a little confused by it, but they're essentially cycling and discard payoffs. Um, we do, you know, cycling is a pretty big deck in standard, so this might give some power to that. Um, but let's see what they have, what cards they have. Torment of Scarabs. It's a four cost black enchantment or a curse. Enchant player. At the beginning of enchanted player's upkeep, that player loses three life unless they sacrifice an online permanent or discard a card. So those decks that want to just make you discard your whole hand, this is a really nice addition to go into those. Um, I like it in my Turgrid uh, deck if I updated it to be Historic Brawl. Uh, that would be pretty fun um, just because it's doing everything that you want. Then we have Flameblade Adept, uh, which is going to get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn whenever you discard or cycle a card. Um, this one's caring about more when you discard, uh, which is a little bit interesting, and I could maybe see something going on with it, but I just, I don't know if that's necessarily what the cycling deck wants, uh, and I don't know if Mono Red necessarily wants to start including cycling, uh, in order for just this one guy, so I don't know how much this is gonna do, but, yeah. And then Faith of the Devoted, uh, whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Not my favorite either. I think uh, Torment of Scarabs is probably the best card here. A little weird of an inclusion, um, but it's good to see them here. Then we have, and this surprises me, more Elf Tribal. Okay, so Elves were one of the most powerful decks uh, back when Jumpstart released. And then they didn't nerf them in any way. You know, some decks grew in power, so that uh, kind of affected them. And then we do go to Kelbheim, the land of shapeshifters and elves, and they get a big power boost, and I don't know how much play they actually see, but then we're going here and we're adding even more fuel to that fire. I think elves are definitely going to be a very powerful deck. Uh, let's see what they have here. Four cost, green creature, elf warrior. Whenever you cast an elf spell, create a 1-1 one, one elf. Pretty good for four mana. It's a bit expensive, but elf decks ramp like crazy. And then Abomination of Lanawar was just in Commander Legends and is a pretty big win con. It also is another option for your dual color historic brawl decks that want to do elves. So I like it for that reason. Next, we have some new artifacts. Um, let's talk about Inspiring sta uh, Statuary. I remember predicting this was going to come out sometime, uh, I believe, but it's nice to see it here. Again, it's a little weird that it's coming out now, essentially, especially because we just had Aether Revolt and... Um, what it was? I'm, like, forgetting the word. Um, we had Aether Revolt and Kaladesh. The, the Kaladesh remaster, they just came out and it's not here, or... It was not there. Oh my gosh. It was not there and it is here. So again, I think they designed this ahead of time. But non-artifact spells you can ask have improvise. Pretty awesome if we go back up here to Declaration in Stone. Because it means you can tap your clue tokens in order to cast spells. And so you can like get a bunch of stuff. I like it for jank reasons. Uh, it's also just pretty good in artifact decks. So yeah, pretty good card. Then we have Cold Steel Heart, another kind of snow tribal thing, but also just another interesting mana rock. You can include it in your historic brawl decks at two mana. Um, pretty good. I like it for something like Joda, where if I can cast Joda turn three instead of turn four, it's pretty pretty big deal. But 
you know, turn three mana rocks don't help me do that. So turn two ones are really good. Uh, so it's good to see another one of these. And then we have Blink Moth Nexus, uh, which is a pretty awesome land. You can tap for colorless, or you can pay one, and it becomes a 1-1 artifact creature with flying until end of turn. And then you can pay one tap, and it it target blink moth creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn uh so the idea here is you can have one of your things become a one one and then maybe have some of your other lands boosted up it's a little gimmicky uh, but it's really good against control decks and i, I believe it also sees play in infect decks but that's not really gonna be a big thing here but against control decks this is like one of our like this is like the fourth or fifth one of these in historic we have the one from war of the spark we have the snow one from kalbheim we have one from zendikar rising so we have a lot of this type of effect uh it'd be kind of interesting to see if you could build like a land creature deck and then we have um, elephants and crocodiles. Um, either way, this is Hazma, Guardian of uh, a Ration, a Commander Legends card. Uh, it's a six cost legendary creature, Elephant Warrior 5 5. And this spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. And then creatures you control cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So a pretty big effect. Uh, and, you know, green, white counters can be really really good and this is just another thing in there that's going to really really help so i definitely like this inclusion um you can kind of see where they're pushing for a lot of these they're pushing equipment decks they're pushing snow they're pushing mill a little bit as well um and so they're going to push plus one plus one counters a bit and then speaking of plus one plus one counters we have minus one minus one counters um so I admit eternal three cost five five with afflict three and whenever an opponent casts a spell put a minus one minus one counter on emit eternal and whenever it deals combat damage to a player remove all minus one minus one counters from it so it's a pretty big creature for cheap but it gets worse as your opponents cast spells i don't love it um i you know it's just not that big of an effect but afflict three is not bad as well so not my kind of thing but i can definitely see why someone would want to play it Next, we have just some three miscellaneous cards. So we have Sawtusk Demolisher, which is actually a new Mutate card that was in Commander, Ikoria Commander. So it's kind of cool to see Mutate get a little bit of a boost. 6-6 uh, six, six with Trample. Mutate it for four, so that's pretty good. And whenever it mutates, destroy target non-creature permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Um, so that, yeah, you can just start destroying your enemy's lands and giving them 3-3s. Three, uh, you do have to target something. So technically, if your opponents don't have any non-creature permanent, uh, including not having land, you do have to start targeting your own stuff. But yeah, I think in a Mutate deck, this is going to be a powerhouse. It's kind of cool to see them just add one little card to boost it up i think it works well then we have harmless offering three costs sorcery target opponent gains control of target permanent you control i love this the more cards we can have that have this effect i think the better um i love gimmicky i'm gonna give you stuff that you don't want decks uh i would love to give people nine lives which is kind of uh funny because it's holding a kitten uh so i love it and then Collected Conjuring, th uh, four cost, blue and red, sorcery. Exile the top six cards of your library. You may cast up to two sorcery spells with CMC, three, or sorry, with mana value. Three or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Put the exiled cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. So yeah, it's Collected Company, which we have in Historic, but for spells, pretty interesting. Um, I don't know how much value, how much this is going to see play, but it's a pretty powerful card. Uh, so would not be surprised if it does see play. Either way, this is coming out March 11th, and then they have one last spoiler for us, which is Death Shadow. It's a 1 cost 1313, but it gets minus X, minus X, where X is your life total. So this is a pretty big deck, I believe in Modern, where your goal is to get your life really low and then play this and just win. I think it's a little risky with the amount of, like, burn in Historic, um, but I think it's an interesting introduction to the format, and I'm curious what you guys think about it. Either way, guys, those are all of the cards. Uh, what did you guys think? Were you disappointed by the inclusions? I don't think it's nearly as exciting as the last one was, but of course they did add their big splashy card with Death Shadow. I really thought it was going to be more fun um, just because of the recent Changeling Tribal we've had. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video covering some Time Spiral Remastered stuff later today, so stay tuned for that. See you guys in the next one. Bye.